I've been searching the bowels of the internet for your questions, and now it's time for Ask the Captain. Let's fly. Avery logged in, I love it. Does the seatbelt sign actually correlate with turbulence or is it just a guess? Well, it's turned on and off manually by me. And so I have really accurate information. In the iPad age, in the cockpit and Wi-Fi, I get up to the minute updates on the weather and it's uncanny how accurate it really is. Uh, so I can many times uh, ahead of time, turn on the fasten seatbelt sign. Usually I'll wait till we start to get into a couple of little bumps to make sure that it's accurate. But I'm shocked at how accurate the iPad weather forecast is. Um, it's been really a game changer for uh, the safety in aviation over the years. All right, holding pattern pat. How do you de-ice a plane in midair? The airplane actually has anti-icing equipment on it, both for the engine and the wings. Uh, on my Boeing 777, it comes on automatically. If the airplane senses ice on the leading edge of the wing or forming on the cowling on the intake of the engine, it will automatically come on. Some older model commercial jets like the 737, 767, the pilots have to turn it on manually. What you look for is uh, evidence of visible icing, which is the temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius and visible moisture. If you have both of those conditions in flight, go ahead and turn it on. Uh, if you're below a minus 40 degrees Celsius, which happens when you get up to altitude, you don't have to turn anything on because nothing is going to freeze when it's that cold. Look it up. It's true. All right. All right. Next is this. Skyler Loop. Have you ever had to enter a holding pattern for hours? Well, I've entered a lot of holding patterns, Skyler, but not for hours. Usually for minutes. Uh, probably an hour is the longest I've ever stayed in a holding pattern. And that was because an airport, uh, there was a crash at an airport and we actually ended up diverting to another airport. Uh, when we go into London, you either hold it Bovington to the north or Ockham to the south. It's already built into your flight plan. You do one or two loops in holding. That's where they, they can get everybody queued up for the runway. It's all part of the process there, but it doesn't last more than five to 10 minutes on a normal arrival into London. Now you know. Nico on tap. All right, buddy. Um, what's the deal with the rudder? Do you actually use it much in flight? That's, I like the way you put that question. What's the deal with the rudder? We actually don't use the rudder all that much. Uh, the rudder is there and the autopilot uses it quite a bit. Uh, but on a big commercial jet, it's very rare to push a lot of rudder. Uh, the only times I really touch the rudder very much is when I have a crosswind landing and there are two techniques you can either crab and then let it out at the last minute which you're going to push the rudder to do that or you can do what's called wing down top rudder where I kind of put a little angle of bank in and I push a little bit of top rudder that will be done manually by me and you fly a straight line all the way into the runway your choice on the technique that's about the only time I touch the rudder it's a big old thing out there you got to be careful it's very sensitive you don't want to overdo it Jess casts. All right, Jess, here we go. Do you ever rehearse your announcements to make them sound cooler? Really, Jess? I mean, how could I sound any cooler by rehearsing? I, I don't understand this question. I'm about as cool as they come. No, actually, the answer is most, most pilots actually do rehearse the PAs that they give because people's number one fear, human beings just in general, is having to talk into a microphone. That's not really my problem. I'm okay with that but uh, I actually rehearse a little bit before what I'm going to say because I don't want to say anything that's off color or you know I get kind of crazy at times so I got to stick with the script but uh, yeah uh, I don't think you can get much cooler than this all right Tommy signal here's the question from Tommy uh, how do you and your co-pilot decide who flies each leg Tommy this is so easy it's called rock scissor paper one two three go all right and sometimes we do it that way and sometimes I will just say to my co-pilots, you choose. You want the first leg or the, the second leg? And they kind of go, I want the first one. Okay, it's yours. Uh, there's not much more science behind it than that. If the weather is bad at a destination and it's required that the captain land the airplane, there are some few requirements where that is true, um, then I will take over the landing from the air from the co-pilot. But we talk about that hours before uh, we ever have to do it. But most of the time it's rock, scissor, paper, shoot. Living with Lane, living with Lane. All right, what's the meaning behind all the emergency squawk codes? There are a number of them. Uh, one is for 
any emergency. If you're an emergency aircraft, you squawk 7700. You put that in, it lets the whole world know that you're an emergency aircraft and they'll get everybody out of your way. Generally speaking, you only put that code in for a couple of minutes to get everybody's attention because it, it actually literally squawks on all radio frequencies and everybody will get real upset with you. Once they know you're an emergency aircraft, that's ATC knows, they want you to go back to a normal squawk code so you're not blasting their ears and everybody else's. The next one is if you go lost comm, uh, that's 7600. If I lose all my radios and I can't hear anybody, I'll dial 7600 in. That's a code that lets ATC know I can't hear them or I can't communicate with them. They will broadcast in the blind. Uh, there's a couple other codes that go in, but I can't tell you what they are because they're confidential and I'm not being coy about that. They just are. But those are the two main ones that you would probably want to know about. Zay talks. All right, Zay, here we go. How is fuel calculated for each flight? That's a, uh, a interaction between me and the dispatcher. Uh, the dispatcher will uh, take that normal flight uh, route. They do it day after day, so they've got an idea of exactly how much fuel my airplane is going to use. They'll tweak it a little bit one way or another based on the weather at departure, the weather en route, and the weather at destination. If I need more than one alternate, sometimes I'll need two alternates. Sometimes the route, because of tailwinds or so forth, will take me on a farther route than more of a direct route. I'll need a little bit more fuel for that. They put enough fuel on the airplane, and this is very general, to fly to my destination, to shoot an approach, to shoot a missed approach, to go to my first alternate, to fly an approach there, and still have 10% of my total fuel remaining. So if I depart with 150,000 pounds of gas, I wanna go shoot an approach, go to my alternate, shoot an approach, and still have 15,000 pounds of fuel remaining for any other contingencies that come up now you know. Echo and Ember. Echo and Ember. What's the most awkward thing that's happened uh, in the cockpit? <laughs> you call your co-pilot by the wrong name for the entire flight. <laughs> uh, you know, many times we're meeting each other for the first time about an hour before the flight. And the people you've flown with before, no problem. Uh, have I been guilty of this? I've done it on occasion. Uh, I, th this one guy's name was John, and I don't know why, but I kept calling him Phil the whole flight. And he was nice about it and kept answering to Phil. And I had it happen to me several times over the years. Somebody would just forget my name was Steve and they whatever name they made up for you, that's who you were for the whole flight. You can tell when a captain doesn't know your name uh, or a first officer doesn't know your name or doesn't remember it. He just calls you buddy for the rest of the flight. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. All right. So that, that always works. You can get out of trouble with that. But that's probably the most awkward thing. Dylan Threads, how many checklists do you go through before takeoff? Dylan, there are 10 normal checklists on a Boeing 777. I go through four, I think, or five of them for takeoff, and then another couple in flight, and I think three for landing. So it would be before start checklist, it would be a before engine start checklist, engine start, taxi. Then when I get up to altitude, there's a cruise checklist, there's a descent checklist, and then after I land, there's a uh, after landing checklist, there's a secure checklist and a parking checklist. If that adds up to 10, I think I got all of them from memory. That's a great question. All right, uh, Haley on air, Haley on air. Have you ever had to land with only one engine? Yes, I have. Not at the airlines. Uh, in the 33 years I've been at the airlines, fortunately, all right, knock on wood, fingers crossed, never had to land single engine. Uh, in the military, probably about five or six times. Uh, now we simulate it all the time. Every time I go down to training in the simulator, it's one engine failure after another, but that's for practice and for emergencies and for obvious reasons. That's a great question. Bon voyage or Ben voyage. <laughs> I like that. That's a very clever play on words. Can you tell when there's an air marshal on board? I can, but you can't. And I can't tell you when. Are there air marshals on board all flights? There might be. Uh, is it likely? Maybe. Uh, that's something I can't really get into, but uh, do I know if they're on board? Yeah, I know if they're on board. Chase in motion. Uh, ever had a funny or awkward exchange with air traffic control? Yeah, all the time. Um, the guys at JFK are an absolute riot. Um, they're real abrupt. They're real New Yorkers. They're real to the point, but they also got a great sense of humor. And so if you mix it up with them a little bit, they'll, they'll uh, throw it right back at you. Uh, but every once in a while, uh, air traffic controllers get bored. Uh, many years ago, I was flying a P3, my Navy airplane, up 
um, through Moncton's airspace up in Canada. And there was just nobody talking on the radio. We were the only airplane we were working. He was working. And so I just keyed up the mic and I said, hey, do you got time for a couple of questions? And he said, yeah, sure. And we talked for, I don't know, the next 30 minutes. He said, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know when I get another airplane. But I was asking where he was, what he did for a living, what he liked about his job. Very unusual to have that conversation, but there was nobody else on the frequency that night. So yeah, sometimes we, uh, we do uh, talk it up with them. Ellie Edits writes this. Have you ever had a close call on the runway with another aircraft? Um, not on the runway, Ellie, but on a taxiway, yes. My biggest fear, the thing that keeps me up at night, is that somehow I'm going to go head-to-head -head with another airplane because there is no reverse on a commercial jet. And so both of you would have to admit what happened, and then you'd have to have somebody come out and tow you away. Very embarrassing. Uh, but once I uh, got to a point where my wingtip almost scraped the tail of another airplane, fortunately it didn't, but it was a close call. Um, missed it by that much, as Maxwell Smart used to say. All right, Rowan tells. Rowan, what's your question? How realistic are flight simulators compared to actual flying? Rowan, sit down for this answer because it's a shocker. They are so realistic that we get completely qualified in the simulator. The first time I set foot on a Boeing 777 to fly the real airplane was with passengers in the back. Now you're going, wait a minute. That's the first time you've ever stepped foot on that airplane was when you were taking me someplace? Yep. Now I'm with a check pilot. And for the first 25 hours of flying in the actual airplane, I'm supervised by a supervisory uh, pilot, but the, the uh, FAA signs me off as qualified, type rated in the airplane based on the simulator alone. Sometimes the simulators are so real, you can't even tell that you're in a simulator. They are absolutely fantastic. Knox Dialed, Knox Dialed, what's your question? What are spoilers and how do they help with landing? Spoilers are those big things that come off the top of the wings, right? I think they have a really cool name. They also call them speed brakes. That's another cool name. Uh, but they're designed to help me to lose a little more altitude when I need to or to slow down when I need to. So sometimes ATC will say, you need to make a crossing restriction and I'm just too high, I'll grab the spoilers. It kind of kills the lift over the rings and I come down faster. Uh, they help me slow down now once I get on the runway. So there's an automatic setting. You put the handle in what's called the auto spot and it sits right there and it says it's armed on my screen and then when there's weight on the wheels when I touch down and that weight comes on the wheels the spoilers deploy I don't have to go grab the handle and pull them out it's one less thing I have to think about it really slows the airplane down now that combined with auto brakes the airplane comes to a nice smooth uh, stop and all I got to do is keep it on the center line yeah great question vibes with Val, ooh, vibes with Val. Do you ever drink coffee during final approach or is that totally off limits? Well, first of all, uh, Val, I'm not a big coffee fan. Uh, if I was, I, you're probably too busy on final to be drinking a cup of coffee. If you're that casual, uh, you need to kind of rethink your life choices a little bit. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have a sip of Diet Coke or something, but usually from about, I don't know, eight minutes out, I'm busy. I'm not thinking about eating or drinking um, on a flight. Now, once I taxi off the runway, can I get a sip? Sure, no problem. That's it for today. My word, these were great questions. Thanks, keep them coming, my friends on the internet. Now you know, I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.